Good morning guys. It's been a while since I've recorded a video. Been wanting to get one of my ride into work. Give you an idea of the range on this thing. With the uh, ERT um, ASI controller and light speed battery. I have made uh, quite a few changes since the last video. So right now I actually have a... Uh, a voltage um, display for the battery and then I have an analog speedometer which is which is really rad uh, which I like a lot I have my uh, my, my iPhone here just to uh, just verify the uh, speedo um, the speed sensor is over here for the um, for the actual display or for the um, for the analog speedometer which is a uh, GPS based didn't work too well and then uh, you know I was keeping track of uh, my mileage with that but the problem with the LCD 750 was um, uh, it had to be powered on manually once you keyed the bike on then uh, then the egg rider came out and then I wanted that display so um, that actually required a, a different harness uh, a different uh, Eagle harness going to the handlebars because the uh, the voltage was different, so the um, the wiring had to change. And then uh, the good thing about that was when you keyed the bike on, the display would turn on, so you didn't have to like you know worry about riding off without putting on the display. And then. Uh, the thing that sucked about that was, again, it was made for a bike with a, a, a lot less power. So, you know, the, the settings internally uh, just did not, uh, did not uh, match with anything above, I think, 50, 50, 54 volts or whatever, 52 volts. So, I mean, you, you had your voltage readout, you had your speed, and then that was it. And then the big turnoff for that display was, um, was the only way you could record or, you know, have the odometer keep the settings is actually manually powered off before you shut down the bike. So it had like the opposite problem, the opposite problem of the LCD 750 where LCD 750 had no problem tracking your data. No issues, you always had to turn it on. And there are times when, you know, you just get on the bike and you start riding because, you know, just pressing that button or holding that button down. It's not a natural thing to do after you key on a vehicle. And uh, as for the egg rider, um, I believe it still works, but only certain firmwares. So um, if you have one with newer firmware, it's supposed to either brick the ASI or get bricked by the ASI. So it's not, or well, it's less than optimal unless uh, you had already gotten one from Allen. But the problem with that is uh, it was at a developmental dead end. 
I understand uh, the guys at Egg Rider were uh, trying to develop some firmware for it so it could actually read, uh, read higher than uh, 54 volts. But I don't think that ever came out. So uh, that's unfortunate because um, I really, really like the Egg Rider in terms of its, uh, its size and just how it worked. Uh, I, I did not like how you had to manually power it off for it to save your uh, save your trip data and turn your odometer. So, you know, after going through those two displays, I just I just completely uh, gave up on tracking my miles. But I can kind of guesstimate how much I have, considering that I ride about 30 miles, you know, a day, five days a week. So it's uh, it's pretty easy to estimate. And this, uh, this new uh, speedometer is, is pretty accurate. Got my iPhone GPS just to uh, you know compare notes. Of course, the GPS is uh, it's not going to be as uh, quick in terms of well, it's not it's not going to catch your speed as quickly as something mechanical or uh, off the motor like uh, the uh, NXT display or the, uh, the other displays. But yeah, at least now, like, if I ever change controllers or, you know, go back to the stock setup, at least, uh, at least I'll be able to keep track of my mileage. And this is, display was pretty cool. I mean, it's, uh, I got it on Amazon, um, just so I could get it quicker. It's like $10 cheaper on eBay, if you, uh, don't mind waiting for it to ship from, uh, from China. Well, this road is rough. And, uh, it's got, uh, it's wire, it wires up pretty easy. There's only three wires, uh, for the power. So you got uh, the power for the unit, power for the backlight, and um, the ground. And I was, uh, I just, you know, tapped it into my existing uh, 12 volt uh, wiring. And uh, yeah, it was pretty simple. I, I uh, wired the uh, display and, uh, you know, the power together because I just like having um, some sort of indicator that the bike is on besides the headlights. Because without uh, without running um, a display that's directly linked to the bike, uh, with, with the bike powered down, or with the bike powered up, you know, the only thing that shows that the bike is on is, is the headlights, headlight and taillights. So, um, there were times where I did uh, walk away thinking I shut off the bike and then I'm like, oh, you know what, the headlight's still on, so I better shut it off. And, uh, yeah, the, the battery gauge is, uh, you know, independent of, um, of, of the bike being on or off, which is uh, another pretty cool thing. Like it, it had been a, a pretty long time since I had the OEM battery and one thing that I missed about it was, um, was, you know, you didn't have to key on the bike to see your battery percentage. You could just push that little, uh, that rubber button and then you would just, uh, see the estimated state of charge. So it's, you know, it was limiting. It just showed you your, uh, all the, you know, it showed the remaining capacity based on standing voltage, which isn't the most accurate, but uh, but at least it was there. So, you know, you can get some sort of uh, estimation on where you're at. And you didn't have to key on the bike or bring your phone down. So the, uh, the Lightspeed battery does have a Bluetooth BMS where you can uh, where you can actually just connect to it and, and see what the state of charge is of uh, uh, each cell in the, in the series of 20, which is pretty cool. But you gotta have your phone, and uh, you know sometimes when you're stepping down to your garage and uh, 
Uh, just the, in your underwear, for example, um, and you don't have your phone on you, and you just want to see, oh, you know, where's my, uh, I can memory of that. You're, you're kind of shit out of luck there. So, um, yeah, this uh, voltage display, also uh, on Amazon from a company called Drock, D-R-O-K. And it was actually recommended to me by, um, by Chris at Lightspeed Bikes. So he's been tinkering with them. And, uh, and yeah, it's really cool. It's got uh, five uh, settings that you gotta through, go through on the setup, which is pretty simple. You know, the first one is like the chemistry and how many cells uh, you have in the series. And the second one is like uh, the, um, the uh, percentage range. Um, so like, uh, you know, I set mine for 80 vol 84 volts being 100%, 65 being zero. And then the third setting is uh, the, the backlight time off, which I initially had at 30 seconds, but I just like having it on all the time and just manually shutting off when the bike's going to be off for a long period. Because uh, I hate having to push it just to see what my voltage is at on a, on a long ride like this one uh, today. And then the uh, fourth setting is a low voltage alarm, which uh, I hope I never hear, but I also set that at, at 65 volts, and that, that's actually a really cool feature to have. I know those look like little little cell testers that plug into the um, um, balance ports. Uh, they they had those like low, low voltage alarms, which is really cool. Kind of kind of like a throwback to the uh, Lexo setup that I had. Um, I I was just trying to get that one that without any any type of alarm, but. Uh, it's kind of kind of cool to have that feature in an audible audible beep. I didn't actually test it, um, you know, at a higher voltage, but I have it set. So uh, if I do take the battery down, you know, the, the controller will will uh, kill the power. The voltage sags at that point, but just having that additional uh, warning. Never a bad thing. And yeah, you know, the setup for it is, is pretty simple. The instructions are, are a little, uh, a little hard to follow, but you know, that's that's going to be subjective. I'm sure a lot of people will pick it up and just be like, "Oh, this is so simple." Whereas I'm not the brightest guy in the world. I haven't really been tracking my speed, but. So far, so good. I think the iPhone app that I'm using is the only free app that doesn't come with ads, which is why I'm using it. But um, it keeps uh, track of your, your trip, your journey time, which is uh, pretty cool. But this uh, display, um, I have it mounted with an autometer. Um, 85 millimeter ring or three and three eighths inch ring and uh, It's working pretty good um, The actual body of it it was white and I just uh, covered up with some gaffing tape uh, The mount I have on the stem and I'm using like a sleeve so that the uh, the stem cap has the proper pressure um, Not too big of a deal since it's not doing a whole lot due to the the triple tree clamp but, you know, I just want to make sure that the, the bearings have, are under the proper pressure. Let's hope there's a car behind me. This is one of those lights. Oh shoot, it actually turned green. That is surprising. So yeah, at the next long red, uh, we'll take a look at the voltage, see where it's sitting at. I 
as I stated in my previous video, uh, the, fuel, the uh, fuel consumption on this bike is pretty much around one amp hour per uh, mile at 45 miles an hour. So I kind of like to keep it there. Just so it's a, a little more accurate uh, in terms of uh, being able to track how much uh, riding time I have left. In the morning, when there's no traffic and almost all the lights are green, this bike does consume way more than in the afternoon. Like, uh, on my previous video when I'm riding home, I, I, I can pretty much like ride however I want and not have to worry about depleting my battery. Simply because like traffic is... Uh, is always going to be limiting my speed and all those red lights just you know coming to a stop You know what? I'll, I'll take it. it. It's beautiful. It does have different uh, colors that you can select for the backlighting. I think there's like five different colors. But I mean, I already have like the red theme going on the bike, so I was like, ah, oh, you know what? I'll just stick with the stick with the red. My braking is uh, coming from the regen throttle. I am uh, just clicking this uh, front brake just to get the brake light to turn on the rear. And 73 volts, 45% battery left. I'd say that's pretty accurate. I am about 10 miles into my trip. Because I know uh, the NXT display, like he wants to, um, you know, he wants to do a lot of updates. He's taking feedback from uh, the other uh, customers, and um, you know, I, I told them like I really wanted an analog speedometer, and um, you know, that's one of those things that he wants to add to the interface. You know, different uh, ways to customize the way it looks. I mean, uh, the great thing about it now is. Um, you know, you can use it to tune the bike without having access to the backdoor app from uh, from ASI. So that's a huge advantage uh, over pretty much 
anyone else who is selling an ASI base kit like Luna or, or going to ASI directly So the NXT display that he has is going to be locked down um, to his controller specifically. So, and let's see what this guy is doing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Driving on autopilot. Another thing I like about the speedometer is um, it goes up to 80 miles per hour, which is which is pretty much perfect for the uh, ASI 72 volt uh, setup, which is capable of, of going north of 70. I mean, uh, no one's ever gonna be holding it at that speed, but just uh, having a uh, uh, speedometer that an analog speedometer that can read the max speed is uh, pretty nice because all the other analog speedometers uh, that are like for bicycles um, a lot of them stop at like 50 and then um, then the other uh, GPS based ones are like 120, 160, 200 so way way uh, way higher than what you'd actually be traveling on this bike even with the uh, performance upgrades I'm actually getting stopped by quite a few red lights, but at least they're not the ones that require a car to come up behind me to turn. Once you have the power, it's really hard to go back to uh, the way things were. 
I mean, those uh, brief moments when I'd put on the fire through controller just to, you know, see how things were, and man, that that square that square wave controller was loud, uh, very unresponsive. The power band was just really coarse or, or grainy. It just it just didn't feel good. So uh, yeah, I don't think I could I could ever go back. I have not tried any of the other voltage setups, you know, uh, 17S, 18S, uh, with the, the 2000 or any other controller. But, uh, you know, I'm sure it is, uh, it is a lot better than what the factory setup had to offer. Even the X controller. downtown Santa Ana I do prefer taking you know some of the uh, the back roads in rather than the main roads like I, I like taking flower instead of uh, Broadway or Main Street because uh, there's just a lot less homeless people and just based off what you're looking at in the video you, know, you don't you don't see any homeless people and if I, if I was riding down uh, Riding down Broadway, uh, you know, there are some encampments and uh, actual shelter that I would need to pass to get to, to downtown. Yeah, just cruising around at 50. Uh, I keep on forgetting about that bump. They're doing a lot of construction down here. They're supposedly going to put a little uh, trolley or a rail car that goes from one of the uh, train station to downtown. Yeah, public transportation in Southern California is a joke. Like, uh, you have your LA Metro and uh, the Dash out in LA, the Metrolink, which uh, can get you out there. And Metrolink uh, runs all the way down to Oceanside uh, to Union Station in LA. And then, you know, each of the little city, you know, counties actually had their own, like, busing systems, which are just confusing. So, they're trying to make, uh, I guess, Santa Ana a bit more like, uh, San Francisco, have little street trolleys. Yeah, those are our tax dollars. At least it's uh, gonna be a free trolley. Or at least that's what I've been told. where things at. I was actually riding pretty conservatively most of the way in. So I don't expect the batteries to be too hot. So 14 and a half on my iPhone 14.3. I did start on my iPhone a little earlier. The trip time took about 30 minutes for this 15-ish uh, mile trip. Um, my battery percentage shows 24%. It's resting at 69.6 .6 volts. Um, I would say that's pretty accurate in terms of usable range. If that actually got to zero and this was like sitting at like 65 volts, that would uh, that would definitely worry me. I'd definitely be crawling at that point. I'd just have my uh, eco mode on and just be going as slow as possible. So let's go ahead and see uh, what the battery temperature looks like. All right, so also shows 69.49 volts, which is pretty good. Um, the battery temperatures are at uh, the higher one is at about 49 degrees Celsius, so not not too hot. Um, I don't even know what 
with what that is. I know, I know like 55 is like 130 something. So it's actually not that bad. Um, I, don't, I wasn't tracking top speed or anything, but yeah, you know, I was going mostly 50 on the way here. So yeah, the consumption is, is, is pretty accurate uh, for a 90% charge. And uh, that, that's about it for now. This, uh, this is a really cool setup. Um, auto meter uh, ring. Um, I don't even know the brand of this speedometer. The um, GPS sensor here, it comes with a really long wire. It's like 10 feet of wire, uh, which I bundled up. Uh, I don't, I don't want to trim it because it's one of those co coaxial, you know, um, type of cables. So uh, it's not like three wires that need to be soldered back together. So I just have it bundled up. I had thought about running it into uh, the frame of the bike, but like I already have so many wires from, from my uh, handlebar controls that um, I just didn't want to add anymore. And yeah, the, this will actually, there's actually a temperature sensor on this as well, but um, since uh, Chris at Lightspeed didn't build it into the battery, I added it later. Um, it, it doesn't really do much except for tell me uh, how cold it is outside. So it's uh, yeah, 8 degrees Celsius. Um, yeah, I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit. Okay, that's about it. Um, I'll see if I decide to post this video up or not.